Let's talk about some of the highlights from preseason today. The first thing I want to talk about is Victor versus Chet. We got a show. I mean, these two showed out in their performance versus each other. These were their stats in the first half of the game. Victor had 18 points, 3 rebounds, shooting 77% from the floor. And Chet Holmgren had 21 points, 9 rebounds, and 70% from the field. They both were as efficient as it gets. Like, And they were trading baskets, too, and they were going at one another at times. Like, there was one play where uh, Victor Wembanyama went to the basket and kind of hit Chet Holmgren in, like, the mouth. On the next play, they, like, zoomed in, you know, on Chet Holmgren, and it looked like he had a little bruise on his mouth. But it doesn't matter because they went back and forth. Because Chet would hit a three, and then Victor Wembanyama would hit a three. Like, keep in mind, both of these players, Chet is, what, 7'2"? Victor Wembanyama, 7'4", and they're just shooting effortlessly. They both are super skilled. We saw some nice dunks. Like I said, we saw a couple of three-pointers. We just saw overall really good games from both of them, and it was really exciting to watch. Like, there is a reason that these two were top picks in the draft, because they both are really good, and I'm excited to see Chet healthy this year. I'm excited to see Victor Wembanyama, because, you know, I'm not obviously the only one. Obviously, everybody is high on him. But I really think he is going to be good, especially the way I saw him play today. Victor looked really sturdy. So this was a great matchup. Like, shout out to the NBA for putting this together because this was a really fun game to watch. And I was saying during the game, it's like the battle of the bigs, except they don't play like traditional bigs because they're out on the three-point line shooting, but they're also dunking the ball. Like, it's really fun to watch both of them play, or at least it was today. Let's talk about the Knicks versus Celtics game. Now, the Celtics did not play their starters. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, uh, Drew Holiday, Al Horford, and Porzingis were resting. A couple other people were probably resting. Derek White was resting. But, like, you know, the main starters, they were resting. But we still got a very interesting game because Emmanuel quickly showed out. Emmanuel quickly is telling everybody that he deserves the bag. And the Knicks have till October 23rd, I believe, to extend him. Otherwise, he becomes a restricted free agent in the summer. And that could end up working out not in the Knicks' favor, but in Quickly's favor. I think the Knicks should just extend him and pay him. I've said this before in a video. I think Quickly has earned that money. Quickly is very, very good. A good two-way player. He does basically everything you want him to do. He can score, pass, rebound the ball. He can play good defense. He can do all the things. He just keeps getting better. He works really hard. Like, I don't understand why the Knicks are hesitant to extend him. So I feel like if they don't extend him now, he's only going to get better this season. And then when the offseason comes, some other team is going to offer him the most, whatever it is that they can offer. And then the Knicks are going to have to match if they want to keep him, which might end up costing them more money than if they just pay him now. But that's my opinion. Regardless, Emmanuel quickly was really, really good in this game. He got on a heater in the third quarter. He was making a bunch of shots from three all over the court, um, initiating the offense, just doing all the little things. Now let's talk about Peyton Pritchard, because if you have not been watching the Celtics, Peyton Pritchard has been putting himself on the map. And of course, I know who Peyton Pritchard was before this, and like I've watched him play, but if you know, he doesn't get that many minutes with the Celtics. Like, there would be a time where he would get some minutes in the rotation, and then he would not play. Like, he really didn't have consistent minutes, and even when he did play, it wasn't that much. Like, usually he would come in when it was like a blowout. The Celtics just signed him to an extension. He got four years, $30 million. Congratulations to him. And it seems like as soon as he got that contract, he was like, let me show you why I earned that contract. Because in the game last night, he had 26. I think he had a four-point play from half court, making threes from everywhere, like going crazy. Well, that continued tonight because he was shooting like 30 footers, like, and making them just with ease. Like he's just shooting from anywhere on the court. He's just letting it fly. He's confident. It's going in. He's having fun. Like I said, he said, okay, I got the contract. This is why I deserved it. And I haven't really talked about Peyton Pritchard on this channel, maybe a couple of times, but like not like a whole video focused on him. But I had, at least in the back of my mind, thought like the Celtics should play him more because like he's a good three-point shooter. He is fearless. Like he will take any shot, as you could see right now, in the games that he's playing. And he's been like that. Like this is not brand new. Sure, he needed to learn the NBA and, you know, develop and stuff like that. I'm not saying he should have been playing 30 minutes a game, but he was basically out of the rotation at times where it didn't make sense to me why he didn't even get any minutes. Well, if his performances in these preseason games don't earn him minutes, then I don't know what will. 
because he definitely, definitely should be in the rotation. And he is the type of player that's perfect to put alongside like a Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown because you could just drive to the paint and kick it out to him on the three-point line and he'll be confident and I think he'll make the shot. So if I'm the Celtics, I would start playing Peyton Pritchard more. Try it out. If it doesn't work out, you know, he can always go to the bench. But give him some consistent playing time for a little bit and see how it works. It may work in your favor. Let's talk about LeBron. He's in his 21st season. Is that insane or what? Obviously, players are extending their primes nowadays and they are, you know, playing longer in the league or playing longer at a higher level. But still, LeBron doing what he's doing right now at, you know, at this stage in his career is insane. And I don't really love saying that because I don't like to say like, oh, well, he's just doing so good for his age. He is just doing good in general. Like, he's still playing well just as an NBA player, regardless of his age. During the game today, Nets versus Lakers, there was a play where he just went full speed, basically down the court, and it didn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter that he's 38, 39 years old. It looks like he's 29. <laughs> I know for 48 minutes a game, it's not going to be the same as when he was 29, that maybe he could play, you know, at that level for 48 minutes a game. But the fact that he could still do it is still insane. And the last player we need to talk about is Ben Simmons. I have to say, I am impressed with how Ben Simmons played so far in this preseason game, Lakers versus Nets. While I am recording this, the game is still going on, so obviously I am not watching right now because <laughs> I'm recording. I watched the first half. Um, he may play the second half, probably not, because it's a preseason game, and usually players don't play in the second half. But if you missed Ben Simmons the way he was on Philly, that's what Ben Simmons was doing tonight. Ben Simmons, I believe he had four or five trips to the line. Like, he was driving to the basket looking for contact. I'm serious. He was looking for contact. He had one play where he drove straight to the paint, straight to the basket, looked for contact, and had like a layup. I don't, uh, he is a left-handed player, so I guess it was a lefty layup. <laughs> but it was like behind his head. It was like not a trick shot, but it was just like a cool layup. Anyway, and the point is like he had a really nice layup plus the foul, like I said, went to the line like five times, was pushing the pace, like even when he wasn't getting contact, he was driving straight to the paint and then kicking it out to a three-point shooter. Like the aggression is there. This is exactly what everybody wanted to see from Ben Simmons. Now, I still personally would like him to take some jump shots. Like I know some people, I guess, are kind of just over that. I still would like him to take some jump shots. It doesn't have to be a three. I don't think he needs to be a three-point shooter. I would like to see him take 15-footers, you know, stuff like that. I just feel like that'd be effective for his game. But if he continues to do what he did tonight, that is exactly what the Nets wanted from him. Like, he was really good in the first half. Like I said, I am impressed. I am impressed because... It really was just like he when he was on the Sixers. That's how he looked in the first half. He looked fast. He looked, I mean, like, he was never that he was slow. But, like, I felt like last year when he was playing, he definitely was slower. And maybe the back thing was bothering him and stuff. But, like, he looks fast. He looks ready to go. He looks aggressive. He's in shape. Like, all the good things you want. But if Ben Simmons is serious about changing the narrative, this is the way to do it because... He looked really good, and if he continues on that, it'll really help the Nets win some games.